Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Nick Tan Chats, my magic and mostly mentalism review show. My name is Nick Tan, and in today's episode, we'll be doing a book review on A Way With Words, put out by Luke Jonas. So hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Nick Tan Chats. Uh, as always, just a quick uh, shout out to all my subscribers out there. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. Your support really means the world to me in keeping this channel going. And of course, if you are yet to be a subscriber and you enjoy watching my videos, if you've gotten value out of my videos, do drop me a like, do drop me a sub as well, so that I know that you guys are watching and you want to see more. So I hope you guys have had a great week so far. Uh, I just celebrated my 12th uh, wedding anniversary with my wife. And some of you have dropped me uh, well wishes on Instagram or Facebook, you know, to congratulate me. So thank you guys so much for doing that. Uh, fun fact, fun fact, incidentally, uh, my wedding anniversary falls uh, on Singapore's National Day as well. All right, so, you know, it's never a problem to remember that uh, my wedding anniversary falls on the... So today we'll be doing a book review. Now, I don't think I've, I've not done many book reviews. I think this is probably my second book that I'm reviewing uh, on this channel. The first book I did was for Secrets by Scott Creasy. So today, uh, you know, we'll be talking about uh, Luke Jonas's book, uh, Away With Words. Luke contacted me um, a couple of weeks ago, you know, on, uh, on Instagram. Uh, he sent me a message to ask if I'll be interested to have a look at this book. You know, it being a mentalism related book, I thought, you know, I would, I would love to go through it. Now, embarrassingly, you know, I've not heard of Luke Jonas's work prior to this particular book. But while the book was on the way from the UK, I decided to, you know, at least do some homework. And I found out that A Way With Words has been reviewed before uh, by David at Magic Orthodoxy and uh, Steve at Real Magic Review as well. So some, you know, some big boys have, have reviewed this, this book. So when I found that out, I was actually a little bit apprehensive. It's like, I'm not sure what else I could add to the mix. But once I got the book, I, I went through it and uh, I'm going to give it my best shot at telling you guys what I think. Now, first of all, uh, Away With Words, uh, it's a 74-page it's a book, all right? So it's more like a booklet. I enjoy going through uh, short books, you know, it's not too, too too difficult to digest. Some books, you can spend like a lifetime going through them. And physically, this book is almost guaranteed to stop bullets and to render your assailant unconscious with. So what is Away With Words about? Now, Away With Words is actually a book um, sharing with you Luke's ideas on uh, word reveals, all right? word reveals in mentalism. And when I first heard the concept for the book, I, I was really excited to read it because, you know, we've got so many methods to kind of get information, right? We've, we've got like, I don't know, billets and peaks and tears and envelopes and wallets and clipboards and electronic, non-electronic, low-tech and, you know, apps and so many. But when it comes to reveals, I really feel that there's not much been written about it. And so I was really excited to look at this. And on top of the reveals that are taught inside the book, there are also some interesting essays for you to go through as well. So it being not a very thick book, I've decided to, you know, quickly run through the contents with you and also give you my opinions uh, on each chapter as well. Also, Luke, uh, together with this book, he actually sent me a, a handwritten note uh, that says, keep up the great work, you know, so thank you, Luke, really appreciate it. So there is a, uh, a foreword written by Peter Nardi and an introduction as well by Luke. And then the first uh, article inside here is called uh, The Art of Missing. Now, this is actually a well-known kind of uh, doctrine, you know, or, or teaching that is accepted by many mentalists out there, it being that it is not great to be spot on uh, in your reveals, all right? not great to be 100% correct all the time. And that by including some misses in your, in your reveals, in your work, it actually renders the whole performance more believable and it comes across as something that is real. Because, you know, if you are seen to be correct 100% of the time and, you know, spot on word for word, letter for letter, drawing for drawing, then it comes across as a trick of some kind and your whole show uh, thus loses credibility. Now, while I do subscribe to this train of thought, uh, because after all, it is a widely accepted thing. However, strangely enough, I thought I was the only one experiencing something that was against this train of thought. All right? I thought I was the only one. And then when I watched uh, Lu Chen's Penguin Lecture in uh, 2019, he also spoke of the same thing. Uh, and and I'll, I'll tell you about what that is right now. So this has happened on a couple of occasions. It's not just like a one-off thing. 
uh, after a show, I've had my, my clients actually come up to me after the show and, you know, congratulated me on a great show. And then suddenly, you know, they would say something like, you know, it was a great show, but you had a rough night tonight, you know? And I said, what rough night? What do you mean? I mean, the audience loved it. And they were like, well, you made, you made a lot of mistakes. I mean, some mistakes, you know, you guessed a couple of letters wrong in the word when you were trying to get it. The drawing was not exactly correct. But, you know, don't worry about it because, you know, I'm sure with more practice, uh, you will get it spot on next time. And it's not just the clients that have come up to me to tell me this kind of thing, right? I've had audience members, uh, you know, smart audience members, uh, decide to come up to me, you know, after my show when I'm at the side of the stage packing up my stuff. They would tell me things like, you know, don't worry about the mistakes tonight. You know, you just had a bad night. People make mistakes all the time. Don't worry about it. With more experience, you will get better. So strangely enough, this concept of making small mistakes it does, I guess, on the surface, it does make your, your mentalism more believable. But there is another, you know, perspective to look at whereby people, I think if people know that you are not a real mind reader, okay, people know you're not a real mind reader, and because they know you're not a real mind reader, they assume that you're using other kinds of skills, skills in that we purport to use, uh, body language reading and influence and stuff like that. And if you're using a skill and you are not, a hundred percent at it, you know, you're not that great at it, then you need to practice more, you're not that good yet. But that is a whole new debate altogether, you know, um, but well, this Art of Missing, overall, I think it is good advice. Alright, next up, there's a reveal called a Mirror Image. I'm not sure how much I can talk about the reveals, because the reveals, the ideas for the reveals are actually what you're paying for, but uh, in short, this is a reveal that you reveal a word you, you apparently get the word wrong, but then you're seen to be correct because the word you revealed was actually backwards. Next up, there is a uh, reveal called the Hangman's Reveal. And this one is something I like a lot, all right? And it's something, something that I'll definitely be using. Method-wise, it's not how I would get to it, but that is the case with a lot of the material inside this book. And Luke actually does uh, tell you that as well, right? The methods that he used to get you to the point where you can use the reveals, the ideas for the reveals in his book. Well, you don't have to do it exactly the way he does. And the hangman's reveal is exactly that. I, I don't want to give it away because this is a, it's a really great idea. So basically, you there's a, a spectator is thinking of a word and you guess letters uh, and you keep guessing letters and you guess guess wrongly, obviously. Then, you know, you make a mistake again. Uh, and then at the end, when they reveal the actual word, it is seen that you are you are correct, okay? And I think it will be quite... It's quite a cool review. I, I, can't, I can't tell you much about it, but um, that review alone, I think uh, it's worth gold to me because I, I can see myself using that reveal and I've had a couple of opportunities that I can remember in my own show that the scenario naturally presented itself. So the next item is the word that never was, right? Now I'll just tell you the effect. Uh, this is a two-person effect. So two people think of two different words, obviously they think of two different words. Uh, you write down your impressions uh, and then you show them what you've written down. It is not a word that either of them have thought of uh, and apparently again you've made a mistake. But then when you ask both of them what words they thought of, it is seen that the word you've written down is actually made up of both of their words. Now this one is a clever idea, uh, however, uh, as written inside the book, it is presented as, as a whole routine by itself. And the reveal of the word being made up of both the words uh, was kind of presented as, as the climax of the routine, however, I, I don't feel that I felt something was missing. I, I, it felt more to me like a phase in in a longer routine. Uh, perhaps, you know, after you show that a word is uh, made up of both the words, then, I don't know, something else has to happen to kind of cap off the whole routine. Uh, currently, in its current form as described, it feels a bit uh, incomplete. But it is a great idea. Next up, there is something called the number word principle. Uh, this is something that Luke gives you uh, for you to uh, actually create your own book test, all right? And uh, I think Luke has created some book tests of his own. This is a, uh, it's an idea for you to actually design and make up your own book test should you want to. Next up is an essay written by uh, Ben Cardell. Uh, it's on memory techniques, okay? So uh, he gives you uh, techniques on how to memorize lists. So if you don't already have a mnemonic system in your head to you know memorize, quickly memorize uh, short lists, uh, then this is actually a, a useful essay for you. 
Wayne Goodman uh, writes about the power of silence. Uh, again, it's something that I agree with. Uh, it's it's gr- you know good advice, and it's not necessary to always fill up every single quiet moment on stage with something. Sometimes it's great. Uh, it's a great theatrical uh, technique to actually have silence because that actually generates interest. Because you know, from a young age in performing magic and mentalism, we are always taught to fill the dead time. But I think there's a very thin line between dead time and actually using the power of silence uh, to create drama and intrigue. And there's also a closing that is written by Luke and uh, and then credit, thanks and acknowledgement. And that's the book. So overall, what do I think of the book? I think it contains very useful information, right? Very useful information for you to uh, think about different ways that you can reveal words, especially, okay? Because uh, it's all about words. However, while the reveals are very simple and they are great ideas, all right, from a performer's perspective, all right, from someone who has some experience performing mentalism, I will say that they are not easy to pull off. Now, why do I say they are not easy to pull off? Now, these ideas, all right, uh, not from a method standpoint, okay, methodologically, they are they are simple and you can come up with your own ways to bring you to the point uh, in the show where you can use these reveals, but they are based on you making a mistake, a credible mistake. And the majority of the reveals in this book actually de- uh, is dependent on you making a mistake. All right, because uh, that is the spirit of this book. You first make a mistake, and then you correct the mistake, and that is what gives the reveals its its strength. All right, there's a surprise element to the reveals. I mean, I use some some routines in my show as well, where I apparently make mistakes, uh, and then after that, you know, I'm seen to be correct all along. But it really is dependent on your acting ability, and people really have to buy into the fact that you have made a mistake. All right, because they have to make that emotional investment in you that you have made a mistake in order for the subsequent reveals to be strong. If you do not deliver the errors or the, or the mistakes in your show convincingly, the reveals subsequently will actually kind of make it obvious that you knew what was going to happen all along, all right? And it's going to be kind of weak for you. All the techniques, uh, all the reveals that are in this book is dependent on your ability to deliver convincing mistakes. All right. Only then, when they are convinced that you have made a mistake, then the reveals will be strong. So it really depends on your acting ability and your ability to deliver a convincing performance as possible. But all in, uh, I've had a I had a great time reading a book. Uh, I enjoyed myself. I picked up some great ideas as well. Uh, the hangman's reveal is definitely something that I will be using. So just learning that bit alone and actually getting me to think uh, of other things, other ways that I can apply that concept. Uh, I think made made it worth my time already. So I'd like to thank uh, Luke Jonas for sending me uh, Away With Words for me to have a look at with you. Uh, If you'd like to pick up Away With Words, I will leave uh, the links in the description box down below. I have some more items uh, that are arriving via mail, alright? So I hope that they arrive really soon and I can have a look at them uh, with you right here on the show. So till then, uh, till next time, please take care as always and I'll see you again on another episode of Nick Tan Chats.